Hi everyone, I'm Ralph and I like music and blinking lights. So far, my few videos have been more about music than blinking lights. Perhaps apart from the first dodgy one that nobody's ever watched. Well, this one's different. It's all blinking lights. And what's more blinking lighty than vintage computers? For quite some time I've been researching and reading about vintage, that's just a nice way of saying obsolete, computers, when I stumbled across this site named Obsolescence Guaranteed. The page I found was about a remake of an ancient computer, the PDB-8 by Digital Equipment. I knew of one of its successors, the PDP-11, but don't recall having heard of the PDP-8 although it appeared to have been a bestseller back in the day. That would be the late 1960s, early 1970s. The PDP-8 is a 12-bit computer, sporting a whopping 4 keywords of memory, later expanded to 32 keywords. It had a front panel where you could toggle in instructions and data one by one, and a host of blinky lights showing the state of various registers and other internal state in real time. I was intrigued, especially since the site owner offered kits to build one for yourself. So I registered my interest and then forgot about it. That was last year. A few weeks ago I was contacted by the kit builder whether I was still interested in obtaining one. Well, to cut a long story short, I said yes, I paid and finally got this parcel. It contains the kit consisting of a bamboo case, all the electronics components, some wooden mounting material, the PCB, and an awesome looking front panel that I barely dared handling with my clumsy fingers. To complete the kit, you also need a Raspberry Pi that runs the actual PDP-8 emulator, but I had already prepared one weeks ago. So all that remained was to assemble the kit. Alright then, let's get to it right away.
As per design, you are supposed to mount the PCB into the case with the metal tabs of the switches resting on the recess of the case. However, like this, the front panel wouldn't lie flush in the case because it would sit on the tabs instead of the recess. So I took a carpet knife and sliced away about 1.5 mm or so where the tabs were going to be until the tabs were completely below the recess in the case. I also ended up using a method significantly different from the instructions to actually mount the PCB into the bamboo case. Because it involved some experimentation, I didn't record all of it, but I can explain what I did. By design, you were supposed to mount the PCB onto the long wooden block and then use the two smaller blocks to support the PCB at the corners. However, there were several problems with this method. First, the long block was not high enough for the PCP to lie level in the case, so I had to add two layers of cardboard on top of the block. Incidentally, I also added two slits because I hadn't quite decided yet on how to wire everything up. Anyway, I found it difficult and awkward to drive the screws through the mounting holes on the tabs of the switches. So after some trying, I eventually decided to deviate from the instructions. Here you can see the four wooden standoffs that I used to mount the PCB into the case. To make the four standoffs, I cut the two smaller blocks in half. They were already of the precise height that I wanted the PCB to sit. I then used a 6mm drill bit to cut a hole into the top of each block and then added epoxy glue around the inner rim of each hole. In order to secure the nuts into the holes, I used this contraption consisting of a bolt, a washer and a nut that serves two purposes. First, obviously, to prevent the nut from falling into the hole, but second, to ensure that the nut would come to rest absolutely flat in its hole. After the glue had cured, I simply unscrewed the bolt, snapped off the washer and got a really nice flat surface for the PCB to rest on. On the right side of the PCB, some components are quite close to the border. Therefore, I cut away parts of the edge of the standoffs so the solder joints wouldn't interfere with the standoffs. I then mounted the standoffs to the PCB, applied epoxy glue to the bottom surface of the four standoffs and lowered the PCB into the case exactly where I wanted it to be. The result is a rock solid PCB mount. If you're paranoid, just like me, you can drive a screw from the back of the case into each of the standoffs. You can also see that I mounted a DC jack into the case, because I think the micro USB connector is just too fiddly. The wires go to a couple of pins that I mounted to the expansion port. Pins 1 and 2 receive 5 volts, and pins 7 and 8 are for ground. All in all, I think this is a really nice way of mounting the PCB into the case. You can disassemble and reassemble it as often as you like, because the nut doesn't mind. To summarize, I must say that the PIDP8, as it's called, is a really nice replica of a PDP8. It looks awesome with all the switches and the blinky lights. Building it was a rewarding experience, and if you want one too, you should really visit the site and register your interest. Perhaps there will be another batch of kits. You'll find more information down in the description. In the meantime, like always, thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more music and blinking lights. Tschüss zusammen!